got, I'll use blue. All right, those are the cells. And they're still surrounding that egg, because that's the egg, and these are the supporting cells. Everybody hear me? So if I were to identify the primordial follicle, the primordial follicle is the whole thing. But that right there is the egg. And this cell right there is the supporting cell. The egg is what's undergoing meiosis. The problem is it's stuck in meiosis one. And as it continues through this primary follicle stage, it's increasing the number of cells that support it because it's going from meiosis one to meiosis two. Did everybody hear me? And so you go from a primary follicle now, your egg, which is in the center still, has now a series of cells that are surrounding it that are cuboidal to columnar. And they'll begin to increase in size, so in, in number, and become smaller in size. So now those supporting cells have created rings around this egg. Everybody understand? Now, what do we call those cells? Follicular cells, but as they increase in numbers, then we start calling them different things like internal fecal cells versus external fecal cells. You understand? And what's happening here is we're generating the signals necessary, again, to take the egg, which is inside, through meiosis one into meiosis two. So we create a secondary, there's secondary follicle, second degree follicle. And then what happens? That egg finally completes. So the egg finally will complete. Egg completes meiosis one. Stuck in meiosis two. So here the egg stuck in meiosis one. We'll complete meiosis one by the time it becomes this, what we call, we get this number of cells that's in here surrounding it. And then these other cells that were surrounding it wind up getting separated. Because fluid builds up between the layers. And so you have all these layers of cells that are surrounding it, but fluid that's inside of it and that's when they call it a late stage tertiary follicle. Now that tertiary follicle with that egg that's completed meiosis one, it's now stuck in meiosis two. And it, it'll be released like that. So what happens? The fluid builds up and the tertiary follicle comes close to the surface of the ovary. And then it merges and, it, and the egg gets exposed. And they call that what? What do they call that? The expulsion is called what? Ovulation. Egg expulsion. Egg stuck in meiosis two is expelled from ovary into Fallopian tube in the hopes that it meets sperm. And that's in the upper one third that fertilization must occur. So that egg actually has to go into the what is the pelvic cavity. Did everybody hear me? That egg gets released in the pelvic cavity. Did everybody hear me? That egg gets released in the pelvic cavity. And somehow it finds its way into the fallopian tube. It gets drawn in, there's current. Fallopian tubes have pseudo stratified ciliated columnar. They create this current flow that will draw the contents in. At least that's what they thought. And so fertilization must occur in the upper one-third of the fallopian tube, guys. Do you hear me? That means sperm must be in the reproductive tract prior to ovulation. 
or around the same time. See why? If you come to me for the whole turkey baster thing, then I've got to what? Track your temperatures and your hormone levels. Make sense? Of course it doesn't. I'm not going to teach you any other way. I told you that already. Any questions so far? Now, if the sperm meets the egg, so here's the key, here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. Does everybody see this structure here? Well, we're not done. That egg left. Yeah, okay, I got you. And then we're left with this with this structure that's of these follicular cells. Well, sure enough, then this guy is going to produce large amounts of progesterone to maintain what we call the luteal cycle. It's the secretion of the uterine wall. That hormone is called progesterone. And so this body is referred to of the as the corpus luteum. Because why? Because it produces progesterone. And progesterone does what? Maintains a thick uterine wall for implantation. What's implantation? The fertilized egg. The fertilized egg already having been developed in the fallopian tube because it got fertilized in the upper one third. By the time it gets to the uterine wall, uterine wall is growing out nice and thick and the developing embryo has these cells called the syncytiotrophoblasts. They'll produce enzymes that will allow it to devour through the wall to implant as the wall is growing out. And then what happens? If that, if that egg has been fertilized, eh, and it is implanted into the uterine wall, eh, that fertilized egg will produce human chorionic gonadotropin, also known as HCG. HCG will tell the corpus luteum, plus nine months, yo, keep it up. <coughs> you understand? Does that make sense? Yeah, because for the next nine months, I'm your developing baby. So you better keep me, you better give me that placental wall. Otherwise, hey, I'm going to get sloughed off. The morning after pill, guys, blocks progesterone. If there's no progesterone, there's no maintaining the thick uterine wall for implantation. So then, even if the egg is fertilized, what happens? It sloughs off. Everybody understand? So you disrupt the hormone. When gonads in the abdominal cavity migrate, they be gonads become they, they become ovaries as they migrate into the pelvic cavity and associate with uh, along with the fallopian tubes. How? How? They migrated from from medial, from medial to lateral, lower abdominal cavity because they go to the pelvis. But for uh, for. Well, no, the fallopian tube will come with it. Wherever it goes, the, the, either the fallopian tube, which is a derivative of the molarian ducts, or the wolfian tube, the wolfian ducts, right, which will create the epididymis, either one of them, they're traveling with the gonads because they know one of the two needs to be it. The problem is, remember, you got to have that switch. The switch is, hey, if you're SRY positive, right, if you're SRY positive, then what's going to happen? You're switching to Wolfian ducts, shutting down Mullerian ducts. If you're if you're not SRY positive or you're XX, then the Wolfian ducts don't persist. The Mullerian ducts will persist, and wherever the gonads will go, as the ovaries ultimately, the fallopian tubes will follow because that's part of it. If they don't, right? The Mullerian ducts create the fallopian tubes. They also create the uterus and the top of the cer I mean the cervix and the top of the vagina. So there and that, if they don't fuse properly to form those, then you get what we call bifid uterus. People who, women who have bifid uteruses, there was a case of a woman who had bifid uterus. She was young, she was trying to have kids in England. And a, a next door neighbor found out that they were struggling 
and she donated her uterus to this young woman. And they put, they, they put the uterus in, the female got pregnant and delivered. So you're able, ladies, you're able to donate your uterus, right? Once you hit menopause, you don't need it no more. Sure enough, they, they gave it to the female. It, it obviously had to have responded to hormones normally. So this is a key component. Now what happens if you're not? What happens if the egg is not fertilized? And there's no HCG. Now watch. If there's no HCG, then progesterone, which maintains the thickness of the uterine wall, involutes and becomes the corpus albicans. So it involutes. So if there's no for with no HCG, guys, no HCG, no HCG. No human chorionic gonadotropin, then I involute the corpus luteum to be the corpus albicans. Now there is a there is one in between called the corpus hemorrhagicum, which is where there's a little bit of blood uh, clotting occurring because of the the uh, the broken uh, the broken uterine wall along with the with the uh, with the tertiary follicle. I didn't write that in there, but it's there. Once it becomes the corpus hemorrhagicum, it seals again, becomes the corpus luteum. Then what happens? At the end of the, right? So at halfway through your, your, your uterine cycle, right? Which is, again, what female is normal. It's a 28 day cycle, supposedly. So at the end of 14 days, no HCG, your corpus luteum revolt, re, 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 uh, it revolts back, re, re, or kind of involutes into the corpus albicans produces a larger, a, lo a lower dose amount of progesterone, and then the uterine wall gets sloughed off. See that? <laughs> then next month in the hopes, your, your, your levels will rise. So what happens, guys? Guys, this is the follicle, isn't it? So what do you think we call the hormone that stimulates the follicle? <laughs> Follicular stimulating hormone. Oh my God, it was so hard. <laughs> And so what happens? The follicular stimulating hormone will stimulate the follicular cells, including the outer fecal cells, to produce estrogen. And estrogen will stimulate the synthesis of progesterone in the interfecal, the internal fecal cells. And so this is what this is what happens. So you have FSH and what? LH, luteinizing hormone. You follow? So there you go, go back. Progesterone and estrogen are being driven by LH and FSH, and sure enough, there's a spike in both FSH and LH when? At ovulation. So there's an FSH spike just before ovulation. There's a hormone spike just before ovulation. Guys, do you see why that is? Because isn't the follicle, isn't the follicle cells getting bigger? Aren't they increasing in numbers and getting smaller, but increasing in numbers? To make what? A bigger follicle? which is nothing more than the supporting structure for the developing egg that's stuck in meiosis one, that then has to go through meiosis two. Guys, this isn't what happens in males. I told you I was complicated, ladies. We go from one to four, and that's it. Women, hey, you had that one cell that was stuck in meiosis one, or you thought you were gonna potentially make four from it? No. From those four guys, you're only gonna choose one of the four that's gonna become the egg that you release. And not only that, you're selecting out one of your exes to be inactivated. Oh my gosh. Yes. Okay. It's complicated. It's complicated. Much more complicated than males. Okay. So please read through it. Um, we'll come back and do some acid based metabolism. There's homework up. The acid, there's, I put questions on this semester for acid base imbalances. They got a great way of you of you looking at them. I did the questions myself. So look at them. They're really important. It's really basic. All you're looking at is three parameters. You're looking at pH. Is it high or low? Basic or acidic? And then you're looking at PCO2 levels and bicarbonate levels. And PCO2 for if it's uh, bicarbonate, if it's kidney. And CO2 levels it change if it's if it's uh, so you'll see in the uh, in the actual homework they have a really great explanation and then some practice questions so that you guys can get sharp in the acid base and balance, right? And then we'll talk about that when we meet up after Thanksgiving break, guys. Happy Thanksgiving! Right? Enjoy your Thanksgiving break. Okay.
What type of thing did you be fine? Finding the merits? Finding the merits? Is the boys pop? Pseudo strike by Blue Harvey Bill because it's a movable scenario to ask for. No, it's kind of much different. Above the epiglottis. Below the epiglottis. Below the epiglottis is CO stratified. Professor. Below? No, because because the larynx by have a good day. The, the larynx. The larynx is. Yeah, but look. Look, here. The larynx is above. Above. So here's the larynx, right? There's the epiglottis, right? Right. Top side of the epiglottis, stratified scribus down here tonight. The underside of the epiglottis and the whole larynx, pseudo stratified scribus. You too. Have Thanksgiving. Have Thanksgiving. Along with the trachea, because why? Because you're producing one liter of fluid that you have to move up from the lungs and into the GI. I mentioned this in class. Yeah. Um, this is where I was confused because they were saying strength. And this no, is what we start from. Right? And so that's why I had to add. So epithelium tissue would be found lining the oral cavity. That's not so. Yeah, so what epithelium tissue would be found lining the larynx? That's the voice. So, that's what I'm saying. It says above that and below that. So that's what I wanted to know yeah. Um, below with uh, the voice box or with the voice box? The larynx is the voice box. Like in the text, it literally says above this one, uh, it's something different from the Yeah, I said in class, the ending lots. I got that. Is it, is it, is it, is it, what are the books that are not? Hold on. Yeah, I don't know what the books are. I don't trust what the books are. Sometimes, sometimes I say it wrong, but I can tell you. Anything below that ridge, including the larynx, is going to be pseudo stratified ciliated to glomerular epithelium with goblet cells because you have a movable ciliary excavator that you must move this mucus along when you trap the breeze, you got to move it up and out. So you can swap. That's one liter of flow that you move through and through single shot. What else? All right. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thanks for watching. All right. Thank you. All right. Have a good day. One of your students yeah. came to tell me that she had more practice. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
if you can make sense of why things, you know, are the way they are, how things act the way they do because of the basic stuff, which is what I always go back to. And most of the times, it'll be because of that. It'll be, they'll, you know, most of the times, even the student that I have, mm -hmm. my 25 and 6 class, she came out more. And most of what we're doing, we're reviewing the same physiological stuff because it's that important. And they're going to expect you to know it, so then be able to explain when you know. Oh, this is that. Cool. Thank you. Yes, yes, and congratulations. <laughs> Hey, at least you know where you're going with this. Yeah. Some others are good for <laughs> All white hair. Yes, yeah. How many? Two. This is like not even a third of my own like I'm sure there's like 14 students we have a future. Digital clock also controls, you know, your ability to turn the power or the the uh, temperature value up or down. So the whole control is there, and and it's an older kitchen. So I spent the weekend hunting for kitchens and really buying anything. I'm sure you may have bought this now, but why didn't you get one of those portable stoves with a little propane oh, no, tank? Not for Thanksgiving. No, no, not for Thanksgiving. No. No, not for Thanksgiving. Oh <laughs> yeah, it's here. I gotta take a, I gotta cook a turkey, right? I can cook a turkey with a damn thing. I could boil a turkey. I could fry a turkey that way. You can fry a turkey. You can fry a salmonella outbreak. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you just gotta cook it right. Yeah. Right. Cool. Right. Remember what I said? We're all shitty dudes, so. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just a matter of whether we really want to admit it or not. <laughs> I'll eat all kinds of stuff, man. I'll eat fish. You know? I eat mean, fish, that's it. Yeah, I love fish, man. I haven't had fish in a while. Fish is good. I love fish.
Stairs is probably closer. Yeah. You can take the stairs. What is it for lab? No. Yeah, I tried to bring mom today. I couldn't because there was some Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can build. I was gonna try to miss it. No, I'm gonna see if I can, if I can put my class away from me and I'm gonna go and run them all inside of my mom. Because if I, if I leave today, I'm not coming back tomorrow, I'm not here on Wednesdays, I'm going to be here until next week, and then I'm going to be here until No, we're all going on. I, I don't teach on Wednesdays. Yet. I'm not here on Wednesdays at all. So I, no, I'm saying I have, like, I have a vacation break. Because I don't, I don't have my second job. I don't, I don't work there either on Wednesday. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Come back to work. Yeah, Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. Yeah. So you guys, I'll, 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 I'll get you a great Tuesday. I'm gonna have to run them off today. I have the answers though. The, if you guys want to go over the answers, you have to the test later. Well, you'll get your answers today, so you'll know what the answers are. Well, there's more than one case. I don't think it wasn't that hard. I mean, yeah, it was. It was I just think it was. It was challenging you to really learn the material that I covered, right? Because everything was in the was I covered the questions there for the most part, other than the 
a couple of questions on smooth muscle and cardiac muscle and how they work, right? In terms of like cow modulin and, and the kinexons and stuff like that. I gave three questions back, so if you got them right, you get three. You know, three and, uh, you know, it's to see whether you guys are really reading the textbook and understanding the textbook says separate of what I talk about in class. I know, I, I screwed up because I had five questions, clinical questions that were supposed to be on this test and they weren't. So they, they would have the muscular dystrophy and the ALS stuff that you're talking about. And, yeah. And then myasthenia gravis. Those are the typical questions I ask clinical yeah, questions. I can't give them. I didn't give you any clinical questions. So it's too late. I can't give you those clinical questions now. I can't put them on the neural test though. <laughs> Because it's really the same. It's really the same. It has the same kind of thing. It's just going to get it worse. No, it is going to get worse. You know what? You have the answer? Yes. I have This is form A, form C and D are here. I'm going to jump down. Let me form B now. Can I take it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, take it. I, I have B. Uh, I'm almost done with the other. Yeah, D is there. A, B, and C. I mean, A, C, and D are there. I, I have B here. Is there anybody's looking for B? I have C. Any, anybody have any questions on this? Throw the question. <laughs> throw, throw the question out there. If you now's the time to ask. If you put two answers, that means that if you got one of them. That's correct. It should you get it right. But yeah, there were two answers there. I know I asked the question uh, more than once, which was the uh, one about the three sodium two potassium ATPase pump. Yes. Because it was that important. Um, which ion is responsible for depolarization of skeletal muscle, guys? Which ion? Sodium, calcium, potassium, or chloride? What is it? Which ion is responsible for depolarization? Sodium. Which ion is responsible for repolarization? Potassium. You guys need to know that for this test. Okay. It's the same, yep, same thing. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Now, in this case, you won't see a question about troponin, right? Because, hey, neur neurons don't have troponin, right? They got actin. They don't have myosin, or troponin, or tropomyosin, because they're not contractile cells. Did everybody hear me? These cells are designed for initiating action potential along the membrane and moving vesicles filled with neurotransmitters down the axon. That's the whole purpose of the depolarization event, is to get these vesicles to move down the axons, and then ultimately get those, those vesicles down at the axon terminals, so that when that action, action potential comes in at the end, and it causes calcium to move in, those vesicles will move and you'll release neurotransmitters, right, across the synapse. Now it's not muscle that's across from it, it's another neuron. Did everybody understand? It's the dendrite of another neuron. And there's a slew of neurotransmitters.